Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the service of Tenebrae. I invite you to stand as we prepare to begin our worship together. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who redeems us from sin and death. For us and for our salvation, Christ became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We remain standing for the opening hymn. Dear people of God, in this holy week, let us, let us hear once more of our Lord's passion and death. With heart and mind, let us go to Gethsemane and to the halls of judgment and, yes, even to the hill of Calvary. Let us hear in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose in Christ's suffering and his ultimate sacrifice for all humankind. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world for peace and justice on earth, for the unity and mission of the church for which he died. Let us remember in Christ's name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry, and the oppressed, all who are sick and who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the aged and little children, as well as those who do not know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. We remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the crucified and risen Lord. Let us pray that we may be taught humility 
as we remember Christ's humiliation, that we may be taught obedience as we remember Christ's obedience unto death, and that we might be taught to love one another as we remember Christ's love for all people. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask as we pray the prayer of his heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, Father, Brothers and sisters in Christ, Pastor Jonathan's sermon last week on Palm Sunday asked us if the Christian faith was more about having everything figured out or that we can't know everything. There is a lot that we must believe on faith. There are plenty of, of examples of tough situations in the Bible where someone may read it and just say to themselves, wow. That just doesn't seem very fair. But we don't know. We can't know the ways of God. And at the same time, we believe, not because of understanding, but rather on faith that God is righteous and more than fair. Anyone with young kids has probably heard those words. That's not fair. We look at what is happening and believe that something else should be happening. Without the hindsight we have in Scripture, I can imagine how the disciples may have looked at what was happening on that Good Friday and thought, we've spent the last three years following Jesus, traveling, teaching, healing. How could it end like this? This isn't fair. I can imagine how hard that week must have been for the disciples. There is a lot that happens in that short week. The triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the institution of the Lord's Supper, the betrayal of Christ that night, Christ standing before the religious leaders who call for his crucifixion, and Pilate's decision to kill a man that even he could find no fault in, all culminating on Easter Sunday. I love Good Friday especially because I end up taking a closer look at my life and appreciate the enormity of what Jesus did for me. The, re the selected reading from Isaiah today foretells the crucifixion and can be difficult to read. He says, as many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form was that beyond the children of mankind, so shall he startle many nations. Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, depicts a very graphic portrayal of this beating and crucifixion. But I wonder if that portrayal is even close after we read Isaiah. Jesus, a truly innocent man, someone who had never sinned, was tortured for me, for you, so drained of strength that he struggled to walk the hill where he was nailed through his hands and his feet. When I try and wrap my head around that and think about how he did that for me, how he did that for everyone, that's hard to fathom. That's an enormous sacrifice for us, a bunch of sinners. I want to look up at that cross and almost angrily say, that's not fair, Jesus. I am the sinner. It's not fair what they did to you. I am the guilty one, not you. I am the one who deserves the punishment. Again in Isaiah, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Jesus hanging on the cross an innocent man, the kind of man that even moments before his death, 
He has the love in his heart to look at his mother and his disciple and ensure that she will be taken care of. But his final words say so much more than just announce his death. When he says, it is finished, and he bows his head and gives up his spirit, his words are proclaiming something that only God can do. It is finished. What started in the Garden of Eden with the decision to believe the serpent's temptation and introduce sin and death into the world has now been completed. Just as God had promised Adam and Eve, the serpent bruised Jesus' heel, but Jesus has crushed the serpent's head. It is finished. The death of Christ and his resurrection from the grave fulfills the promise of reconciliation. We are no longer at war with God. A peace treaty has been called, and the war is over. Again in Isaiah, he says this, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. It is finished. My sinful body, despite my best efforts to be a good person and do good things, is incapable of standing in front of a most holy and righteous God. But now, because of Christ, I am accounted righteous. You are accounted righteous because he bore our iniquities. It was completed on the cross. And now, because of Christ's sacrifice, when God looks at me and when he looks at you, he sees Christ, a brother, a son, a daughter, no longer an enemy, but family. That may be difficult to understand especially since we continue to sin every day. But it's not about understanding. It's about believing in Christ's death once and for all. And I believe. I believe in Christ's death for my sins. I believe in the agony that he went through on Friday, accomplished something that only God can do for me and for you. His words, it is finished, means that when we were baptized into the body of Christ, we were given a new beginning, a new life with Christ, the right to eternal life because of one thing, the grace freely given to us by God because of Christ. Not because of anything we do, but because of who we believe and put our faith in, Jesus Christ. At our recent men's retreat at Camp Agape, we listened to a DVD that included the story of a young pastor who took over a small church. He met weekly with one of the church leaders and valued his advice and mentoring. But one day this man made a comment saying that he was grateful for the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross because now everybody goes to heaven. After a couple clarifying questions, the pastor confirmed that the man meant everybody regardless of whether they were atheist, Muslim, Hindu, Jewish, Christian, regardless of whether or not they believed that Christ died on the cross for our sins. He meant everybody was now going to heaven because of Christ. Yes, God desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, but it is by calling on the name of the Lord Christ Jesus that we are saved and have eternal life. We give thanks to Christ for his sacrifice, calling on his name and believing on faith that God's grace now saves us. And we can go forth tonight and tomorrow with one big advantage over the disciples in their day. We know that the darkness of Friday leads to a joyful victory fully realized on Sunday morning. Something that only God can do, he has already done for you and for me. For only through the words do the, only through Jesus do the words it is finished now lead to an eternal beginning with Christ in heaven. Amen.
It was two days before the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The religious leaders who collaborated with the Roman occupation were conspiring against Jesus. They had gathered in the place of Caiaphas, the high priest. This man had received the high priesthood at the hand of Valerius Gratus, the former Roman governor, and now retained the office under Pontius Pilate. They were all planning to quietly arrest and destroy Jesus so as to avoid a revolt among the Jews. of the feast when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, the disciples of Jesus approached him and asked, where do you wish us to prepare the Paschal meal? Jesus took two of his disciples and instructed them, go into the city and you will see there a man carrying a water jar. He will show you a suitable place. The two did as Jesus commanded. They entered the city where they found the man with the water jar who brought them to a large upper room. When evening had come, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were eating, he said, I tell you truly that one of you is going to betray me. The disciples were stunned with grief and began to protest one after the other. Surely not I. Jesus replied, The betrayer is one of you dipping his hand in the dish with me. The Son of Man is fulfilling scripture, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Then Jesus slipped, Judas slipped out into the night. As they were eating, Jesus took bread. After reciting the blessing, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then taking, taking the cup with the traditional blessing, he gave it to his disciples as he said, This is my blood of the covenant, which is being shed for many. I tell you in truth that I shall not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it fresh in the kingdom of the God. Having son of him, they left the city for the Mount of Olives.
As they walked, Jesus said to his disciples, You will all desert me this very night. So it is written in the prophet Zechariah, Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Then Peter protested, Though all desert, I will remain by you. Jesus replied, I tell you truly that in this very night, before the cock crows twice, you shall deny me three times. Still Peter maintained, Even though I must die with you, I will never deny you. And so declared all the disciples. Jesus halted at an olive garden, olive grove called Gethsemane. Then going apart with Peter, James, and John, he left them on watch and continued a little further alone. Then he fell on his face in anguish prayer. Soon he returned to the three on watch and found them sleeping. Rousing them, he asked Peter, Could you not watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray that you are not put to the test, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went apart in troubled prayer, and again he returned to find the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. A third time Jesus withdrew to pray, and a third time he found the disciples sleeping. Then Jesus said, Sleep on and finish your rest. Now is the time for the Son of Man to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Here comes my betrayer.
Jesus had not finished speaking before Judas, one of his own disciples, arrived with a group of Roman soldiers and other armed men from the temple. Now the betrayer had arranged with the authorities for a sign and had said, The man whom I kiss is the one you want. In accord with this arrangement, Jesus went directly to Je Judas went directly to Jesus and cre cried out, Greetings, Master. Then he gave, gave him a kiss. Jesus responded, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Immediately, the soldiers laid hands on Jesus and held him fast. Then one of the disciples with Jesus drew his sword and cut off an ear from the slave of the high priest. But Je Jesus said to him, Sheathe your sword. All who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you not know that I can call upon my Father and that he will respond at once with more than twelve legions of angels. Then turning to the mob, Jesus continued, Have you come from me as against a rebel bandit with swords and clubs? Why did you not seize me in the temple where I sat teaching by day? Were you so afraid of the religious authorities? that you must come from me by stealth? Nevertheless, your actions are fulfilling the words of the prophets. Then all of his disciples forsook him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus brought him to Caiaphas, whom the Romans had made a high priest. Peter followed at a distance as far as the courtyard. There he sat with the attendants and warmed himself by the fire. The high priest had gathered his whole council, and they began to arrange the case against Jesus, which they would present to Pontius Pilate, the governor. The charge was that Jesus claimed to be the king of the Jews, and they brought in many false witnesses, but to no avail. Finally, two came forward and testified, We heard this man say, I will tear down this temple with my hands, and within three days build another, not made with hands. The testimony was evidence that Jesus claimed an authority over, the, over temple affairs, which traditionally belonged only to the rulers of Israel. And in those days, Israel was ruled from Rome. Yet even these witnesses were unable to agree on their testimony. Finally, Caiaphas stood up and examined Jesus directly. Have you no answer to these charges? demanded the high priest. Jesus remained silent and answered nothing. Then the high priest put the question of kingship in terms of the royal titles, anointed and son of God. Are you the anointed one, the son of the blessed? he probed. Jesus answered, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest turned and said, What need have we of witnesses? He has condemned himself. They all concurred that Jesus was indeed worthy of death. Then those holding Jesus began to spit on him. They covered his face and were striking him as they taunted him and said, O anointed one, Prophesy, who is it who is striking? Now Peter was warming himself in the courtyard when a small slave girl entered. She confronted Peter and said, You also were with this Jesus, the Nazarene. Peter quickly gave a denial. I do not know what you are talking about, he replied, and went outside into the gateway. Meanwhile, the cock crowed. 
The slave girl followed Peter out and said to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Again Peter denied knowing Jesus. After a little while, the bystanders said directly to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you speak with a Galilean accent. Then Peter began to swear with an oath, I do not know this person of whom you're speaking. But the cock interrupted him as it crowed for the second time. Immediately Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. the chief priests, along with the other Roman collaborators, bound Jesus and delivered him over to Pontius Pilate, the imperial Roman governor. When Judas saw what was happening, he knew that Jesus was doomed, and he repented. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and confessed, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? They re responded. That is your affair. Judas threw down the thirty pieces of silver in the temple. Then he went out and hanged himself. Picking up the thirty pieces, the chief priest said, It is unlawful to put this silver into the treasury, for it is blood money. Whereupon they used the money to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. Therefore that field is known to this day as the field of blood. Jesus stood before the Roman governor as the accusers made their charge. We found this man perverting our nation, they said. He was forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and proclaiming himself anointed king. The governor asked, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, you have said so. The chief priests were accusing him of many things, 
Therefore Pilate again spoke to Jesus. Have you no answer to give? he asked. Look at how many accusations they are making. Jesus astounded Pilate by remaining silent. At the feast of the Passover, the governor used to release a prisoner, and some were urging Pilate to do so at this time. Now, there was a notable rebel in prison with those who had committed murder during the insurrection. His name was Barabbas. Therefore, the chief, chief priest arranged a demonstration to demand Barabbas. Pilate asked them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus the Anointed One? The demonstrators shouted, Barabbas! Pilate responded, What shall I do then with Jesus the Anointed One? The crowd shouted, Crucify him! Pilate continued, Are you certain of his guilt? The crowd took up the chant, Crucify him! Crucify him! Again Pilate spoke, Shall I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, cried the demonstrators. Then Pilate agreed to release Barabbas, but Jesus, the anointed one, he handed over to his soldiers for scourging and crucifixion. Crucify, crucify, let him be crucified. Crucify, crucify, let him be crucified. Crucify, 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 let him be crucified. Crucify, 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 crucify. The soldiers led Jesus away with the governor's within the governor's palace. There they assembled the whole battalion. They clothed Jesus in royal purple. They set a crown of thorns upon his head and shoved a reed between his fingers for a scepter. They began to mock him by kneeling before him and proclaiming, Hail, King of the Jews! They also spat upon him and smote him on the head with a stick. Then, after mocking him, they took away the purple robe, returned his own clothes, and brought him out to crucify him. On the road they, made, they met Simon of Cyrene coming in from the countryside. They compelled him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means skull. There they crucified him. They offered him wine mingled with myrrh, but he refused it. His garments they divided among themselves, casting lots for them. Over his head they inscribed the charge against him, the King of the Jews. Also, there were two insurrectionists crucified with him, one to his right and one to his left. Those who passed by were shaking their heads in scorn and saying, So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself. Come down from the cross. Likewise, the priestly collaborators mocked him as they said to one another, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Let the Anointed One, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Even the two crucified with him reviled him.
congregation to stand. From midday, there was darkness over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At that hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema shebaktani, words that mean, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders said, Look, he is calling for Elijah. One of them put a sponge full of vinegar on a stick and laid it to his lips. Others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus, having uttered a loud cry, breathed his last breath. Suddenly, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, and the rocks were split. Even the tombs of the dead were opened.
And when the centurion on watch and the others who were with him saw all that was taking place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, yes, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forevermore. Amen.